Hey guys, welcome to chapter 12 of the Skyward Sword video walkthrough, and this chapter is going to cover the Sand Ship, the fifth dungeon of the game. The first time I played through uh, Skyward Sword and the first time I played through the Sand Ship, this was, it stood out easily as my favorite dungeon, and uh, I couldn't really point the finger to why that really was. Uh, I think it's just the, the uniqueness of the style. I'm sure we've had dungeons on ships before. I mean, we had uh, the ghost ship from Phantom Hourglass. But something about this dungeon seemed uh, kind of unique. Uh, what was strange about this is that it's, it's a very dense dungeon. I mean, there's not that many rooms, not that many areas to go to. And in fact, this might sound very strange, but it sort of reminds me of the original Resident Evil the remake for the GameCube. Uh, now you might be thinking, why is he comparing Zelda to Resident Evil? Let me explain. In the original Resident Evil, you uh, you were in a mansion for the most part for much of the game, and uh, you had access to much of the mansion right away. However, it seemed like wherever you went, whatever hallway you went, almost every single door was locked. And uh, so you couldn't really progress, you needed you, you needed to find one key and that'll let you in. let you go through one door and then you find another key and it opens up another pathway. And that's sort of reminiscent of the sand ship uh, for me. Because right away, you can, you can literally go through almost all of the sand ship right away. Except like every hallway you go down, it seems there's some sort of barrier. You can't go through this lock yet. There's some like electricity blocking your path, there's some spikes here, this door is closed, this door ne you need a small key. So there's so many like barriers that in all sorts of different areas of the dungeon and it's sort of like a puzzle of okay what do I need to do first, then I need to do that, etc. And it's one of those dungeons that there's a lot of backtracking, especially the first time through. And uh, by the time you're done with this dungeon, you're surely going to have it completely memorized in terms of the overall layout. And uh, to me, that <laughs> that just sort of reminded me of the original Resident Evil. Like, I, I have the original Resident Evil mansion map sort of like ingrained in my head just as much as I have the, the dungeon map of the same ship. Anyway, the, uh, this dungeon does have a ton of these Iraka enemies, and uh, if you have the treasure medal equipped, you are going to get tons of jelly blobs throughout this dungeon. Granted, there is no way you really need this many jelly blobs at this point. In fact, despite the fact that it's one of the most common treasures, especially if you have the tre tre uh, treasure medal, you only need eight of them. Yeah, that's right. Eight of these for the entire game in order to get all of the upgrades. So, um, you should be able to get plenty of them in here, but... Uh, right away, you find the door that leads to the dungeon boss, and this is sort of what I was sort of saying when making the comparison to Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, like, right away, you can see, alright, this is where I need to go for the dungeon boss. I've already traversed through multiple floors of, uh, of the sand ship. And, uh, like, I already know where my end game is, where my my goal is. But, uh, we have a long way to go before we get there. Although, in general, this isn't that long of a dungeon. In fact, uh, I think this is probably, uh, this could be one of the shortest dungeons, actually. If you, like, speedrun it and such. Granted, the first time through, uh, this certainly won't be the shortest dungeon, because, uh, you sort of need a... Uh, figure out what you need to do, and there's so, there's a lot of backtracking, and uh, like there's some shortcuts you could take, but you wouldn't know that these are shortcuts the first time through. Anyway, over in this room, there's a few Arakas, and there's also some ancient robots. Uh, and if you recall, Skipper sort of mentioned that uh, there, some of his folks are on here, but um, what you want to do is use your gust bells to clear the dust. And there's these four little like wheel-like things on the ground, and uh, you can see that uh, the one over there on the right has a two on it, the one above there has a three, and this one has a four, and each of them have a direction basically. And uh, there's the number one over here, so you have to just hit the switch. It's just like the one in the ancient cistern. You have to hit it in the proper order. The proper order is down, up, down, and right. And uh, doing so will open up the... No, it'll allow you to 
head on through. So just go ahead and do that and then you can open the treasure chest here to get the wrong side link. Come on. Come on. There we go. Go ahead and open the treasure chest to get the small key. Uh, you might have noticed right, pretty much right at the beginning of the dungeon there was a door uh, that was locked that, well, you need a small key. So that's going to be our destination. So you're going to have to do a little bit of backtracking. Uh, you have to make your way pretty much all the way to the first floor of the dungeon. So uh, along the way you can defeat these thunder keys if you haven't already. And as usual, these thunder keys will drop monster claws. And uh, much like the jelly blobs, monster claws shouldn't be too much of a problem at this point uh, if you've been if you have the treasure metal. Although uh, monster claws are actually one of the treasures you need the most of them. In fact, you need 17 of them in order to make all the necessary upgrades if you want to like 100% complete the game. So that's one of the treasures that it's uh, worth grinding for. I mean, the only treasure you need more of them are the amber relics, but uh, monster claws, since keys drop them, it's one of the easiest uh, treasures to find. Over here, there's a barrier to the right that sort of like spikes, and to the left, there's a gate. Uh, and uh, we will be progressing through those little sections in just a little bit. Uh, for now, we want to make our way all the way to the first floor, as I mentioned moments ago. And uh, go ahead and save at the bird statue if you'd like. And uh, also, there's a stool right next to the bird statue. And uh, you should sit down on the stool to restore your health. Uh, but afterwards, you can go through the locked door. And this will actually uh, begin the boss battle, or the mini boss battle with Scarvo. So go ahead and uh, you'll see a cool looking cutscene over here. The battle with Scarvo is one of the most unique battles in all of Zelda, just because you're on this very narrow pathway. Uh, you can't turn around and run backwards because there is a spike uh, wooden plank that sort of prevents you from uh, retreating. Uh, the key here is you have to hit Scarvo all the way to the edge, and it'll sort of, you know, you want to hit him all the way to the edge of the plank, uh, almost as if you're going to knock him into the sand level. Uh, you need to hit consecutive hits, so after you, you hit him once, follow it up with a number of consecutive hits to cause him to fall backwards. Uh, another good method here is using your shield. When it's about to attack, deliver a timely shield bash and it'll stun him momentarily and you'll, uh, you'll be allowed to hit him a couple times. So you just want to keep at it. Uh, during the second and third phase, you do want to be a little more aggressive since you don't have as much uh, protection in the back since the spike wall is uh, really closing in on you. Uh, you certainly want to use either the braced shield or the... Uh, the best bet is the sacred shield, actually, because that will regenerate. The third phase, he doesn't have any swords. He's, uh, he's kind of easier to attack, but... His, he's more aggressive with his own attacks. Anyway, this whole battle, this, is just, this just screams to me, Peter Pan versus Captain Hook. <laughs> I mean, look, let's see, green guy with a tunic versus a, well, a pirate of sorts with a hook <laughs> and a sword. Like, I mean, I don't know, this is just Peter Pan, Captain Hook to me. So after defeating him, go ahead and open the treasure chest and we'll find out what's inside next time! <laughs>